Okay, hello and welcome back to Peter Ross on uh, Fly Tying with Ogmore Anglin Club of uh, Bridge End. Uh, today I want to tie the uh, baby doll. Um, it's a fly um, from the 70s and I want to tie this today because as you know I'm aiming at new starters and um, a beginners to fly tie in a new new fisherman of whatever age and this is an ideal fly for someone who wants to start to fish still waters and maybe then progress on to, to rivers if they want to um, it's it was popularized in the um, uh, very popular on the English Midland reservoirs and it's uh, although it's fallen out of fashion it's still as deadly as as ever I'm told not a lot of materials in it and it can be tied in various colors um, the original was tied in all baby white there's a black one here which you can see which I don't um, use very often um, it can be varied in many ways uh, you can add a gold head you can add chain bead eyes um, a beard hackle and <laughs> it's very good in the sea for mackerel my grandchildren uh, when they go mackerel fishing they, they they like to use this now it was invented by Brian Kench and popularized by uh, Bob Church originally all white baby wool white um, but it's also good in all pink but I've tied here a dual one as you can see and it's a variation, uh, a variant I would call it, because along the side, I'll try to tilt it, along the flanks, I don't know if you can see that, I've put some pearl mylar, and I'll be putting that in today as we tie it. The other thing is, the original one um, didn't have any weight. I like to add a, a lead underbody, um, for still waters uh, and I, I think that helps it to uh, to float um, if you're using a sinking line or an intermediate you wouldn't need to worry about that now it's uh, it's cheap to tie you can tie thousands of flies from a ball of wool a ball of wool like this in pink and in white like this ordinary knitting wool um, Okay, so we'll we'll take it from there. The hook I'm using today is a Camazan B800, and as you can see, it's a size eight and it's a long shank. Okay, here we go. I'll put a foundation of silk on to start, and I've already waxed this silk. I use a black silk, but um, you can use whatever you like, really. I'm now going to put on foundation down to the bend. Just like this. Nip off the surplus. And at this stage, I'm going to tie in a rib. And I'm just going to use a copper wire rib. So I'll tie this in here on my side, just like this. nice and firm take it down to the bend like that now I'm going to put on um, the weight that I was talking about and I like to use Vineyards uh, Uncle Jack's um, lead it's adhesive it's got a paper back in and when you t take the paper back in off you've got the adhesive and this is a piece that I've cut off I take the paper back in off like this and I'll just tie it on take my silk back up first right up to the eye just there and now I will tie on wind on rather this lead So I say it, you don't have to put this on you may not want to do it but um, the original fly didn't have this but if you want to I quite like it 
You see I'm doubling back, getting to about there, just to give it a bit of weight around what I call the thorax area. Now while it's there, I will seal it down with this in open turns of silk, just to bind things down. Doesn't really matter too much about this, but I like to do that. Just open spiral winds to bind it down. Okay, now we're at that stage. Uh, because I'm going to tie it in two colours, I put on the wool. And this wool, the pink I'm going to use, is going to come over the back um, as a sort of, um, well, I can't call it a shell back, but um, you will see what I mean. It'll be coming over like that as we progress through the fly. And I've the wool I've stripped into single strands. You don't need to do that, but I find it's easier. Now, the next piece of wool I've got is the white. I've got a um, one single strand that I've taken out, and I've doubled it, and I'm going to put it on just like this with uh, the loop at the back. So this gets tied on as well, like this. And I take this down. This is a little bit long, so I will, as long as I've got plenty to tie over, it'll make it easier for me to bind things down. So I now take these four strands down to the bend, like this. So at the moment I've got two white and two pink. Two pink at the front, and this is a loop here. You see this loop? I'm going to cut this loop, I'm going to cut one of them right at the bend here. I'm going to leave a bit like that, so I'm not right at the bend, I'm leaving a bit like that to use as a tail. Okay, I'll take the silk back up. To the eye just like that and now this long strand I will be eventually winding up but before I do that I'm going to put on the mylar flanks I call them flanks so quite honestly I should have tied them in before bringing my silk up so I'll just take it back down which is not a problem down there this does give a, a sort of natural look to the fly when it's in the water. It gives a sparkle. We've all seen how a, a little fish, the fry, which this is going to imitate, how it flashes in the water. So I'm tying these two on, one each side, which will be brought forward shortly when the body's wound on. So did you see how I'd done that? I just wound those, just got them on the side. I've sealed them down. I'm winding them up now, tying them down. My silk now comes up to the eye. Okay, they will be put on a bit later. But first of all, I've got this one strand here that I'm now going to form the body with. Now this, because it's one strand, it may take a bit of time to do. But I prefer to use one because I find I can control things a bit better and I can form the shape I want to. So I ask you to bear with me while I do this. It's a bit slow, but it'll do a good job. Some people leave it double and um, they'll get up quicker than me, but by doing it this way, I take my time and I'll get there. I shorten that a little bit. You 
can see what I'm doing. When I get up to the eye like this, I go back down to form the shape of a little fish. Some people call it carrot shape. And I go back up like this. You can twist the silk to flatten it out if you want to. This is the general idea to get the shape of a little fish, which is what this is designed to imitate. Okay, now that I'm there, I'm going to tie it off. One quick wind to hold it, nip off that surplus tie it a bit better like that. Now I'm going to bring forward these two flanks. I call them the flanks. Now then, this one is my side. So it comes along the side like this. And you should be able to see this one with a bit of luck. I just hope it's coming out on the camera all right. Okay, remove the surplus. One, two. I'm just going to have a quick look at it. Yeah, that looks okay. Right. Now that I'm there, I bring over the shell back. You see that? Give a little tie there, but there's three now at the rear. And they're going to be secured with the rib. So this rib comes over once twice like that and now I bring the rib up just copper wire you can use any wire see the type of thing that's happening Seal this rib down nice and tight. I can waggle it, hopefully, and it'll break off. Don't think I've tied it quite tight enough. So bear with me. A few more strong winds. Nice and tight. And just to save time, I will cut it. If you cut wire, always cut it well up in your scissors. Okay. This is a beforming head like that. But first of all, we've got the tail. So we get the tail about the proportion we want. It's normally sort of three quarters of the length of the body. So I cut it like that. And I will now tease out with my dubbing needle get in and tease out if there's any tight fibers there and then I'll show you what else I do with this tail see that's teased out a bit on my little craft knife I've stuck some velcro and I velcro it out a bit like that See the type of thing? And now I simply form the head and finish everything off. A 
I like to give it a good head because it's it stands out, it's a bit prominent on the baby doll. This is the baby doll variant with the only variant really, um, the two colours but quite a few were tied like that. The original was all white but what I've done is used the mylar, the pearl mylar on the flanks which definitely improves it. I've done a whip finish, I've drawn up and I'm going to cut the silk. That's our fly. All that's left to do now is to varnish the head and to ensure the eye is clear. That's the head varnished. I know the eye is clear because I didn't go close to it, but to be on the safe side, I'll just run my bottle brush up through it. Just an old feather, like that. That's the baby doll variant. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. It's a very successful fly on still waters. Uh, it's still as deadly as ever. A lot of these flies that were around in the 70s have dropped out of popularity. But, I mean, the other one is the Jersey Herd. Um, Old-fashioned, if you like, old-fashioned by today's standards. But um, still very good flies. Okay, thank you for watching.